Possibly. I doubt it, though. Oh, Nina's going to join us. All right. Can you tweak your camera so we can see you better? There you go. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. All right. Yeah, what do you got I'm for trying me? to. I'm sorry. I'm on a tablet, so. Okay. Tilt it and lean it up against us. So let's revisit the question you posted so everybody could understand. So why don't you give it to me again? Okay. Go ahead, give it to me. Um, so I met this, uh, well, we were teenage friends. Okay. We were teenage friends. I had no idea this guy had a crush on me. Okay. And I thought he had turned me down, basically. And just the past how, how old you actually... Now? How old are you he messaged now? Messaged me on Messenger asking if I was the same girl. So okay, I'm forty. I'm for. I just turned forty-five. Okay, so you were teenage friends. So roughly about twenty-five years have passed. Yes, since you initially connected. Okay, I just wanted to have some perspective here. Okay, keep going. Keep going. That's okay. Um. So he messaged me on Messenger, and I wasn't sure. I waited about a day to think about it because I'm like, I kind of remember this guy. So we started talking, and I was a little, I mean, weirded out. And I'm a bit insecure about it because I did, in fact, lose my husband about two and a half years ago to a heart oh. attack. Oh, I'm sending you some love, Nina. So, um, it's been tough for me, you know, I, I haven't been back in the dating scene. Thank you. Thank you. He was the love of my life. We were together 18 years. Yay. What a blessing to have 18 years. Um, no, so let's talk about this. Yeah, right. Right. He let's was amazing. Um, friend. so yeah, you know, I continued to talk with him. Yeah, go ahead. Cause there's some lag here too. So just fair warning. Oh, okay. So, okay, so you he reached out to you. You felt a little awkward. How long ago was that from today? How long ago was it he reached out? It's all, it, this is crazy. And I maybe shouldn't have asked anything because I know a lot of the ladies on here have probably been doing this for a while with some of the men that they, they're with. It's only been a week. Okay. It's only been a week. Okay. So it's only been a week and he's been a little sketchy with, with communication. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. He, he's okay. the one who initiated talking. Okay. So, so what do you know about, what's his backstory? Was he married, divorced, you know, widowed, a widower? What's his backstory? So he was in fact married. Um, for 15 years, he got married to like 20. They have one child together. Okay. She cheated on him and they divorced nine years ago. Okay. Okay. And in that nine years, has he had any relationships? In this past nine years, has he had any he relationships? He says he's been dating a ton, but he keeps, um, like he... He likes chubbier women. He likes some ladies with some meat on them, you know. Okay. And he keeps running into women who are either cheating on their husbands or they're just there for the sex with him. I mean, he's okay. a big built guy, so you know he's he likes big butts and he women, cannot but... lie. And your other brothers can't deny. Um, okay. So all right, so that's his type. And so you said he's dated a lot. <laughs> You like the uh, big butts. Uh, so he's dated a lot, but he hasn't had a relationship in nine years. Okay. So, so he reached out and expressed some interest. Was right. it just not a sexual? solid one? No. Was it sexual interest or was it go out to get a bite to eat kind of interest? Like what was his interest? It
Uh, the talking was a very much leaning to sort of a sexual interest, but he, when we had the deep talks on the phone, because um, he's very intellectual, he would go into how he's looking for a woman with actual commitment, you know, not someone who's just looking for sex, someone who's not married and on the side doing things. And I, you know, yeah. I told him, you know, obviously I'm not into that kind of thing. Okay. So, okay, let's keep going. So it's only been a week. And then you said his, his communication was sporadic or what exactly happened? It was sporadic. So he would be upset if I didn't text him within a certain time frame. He texts me in the morning, but I work through the morning and I leave my phone off, which I know is a bit unusual, but he would get a little frazzled um, and I'd respond to him when I could. And then um, he would text back and it would be fine once in a while. And then it started dying off around Thursday of last week where he would just be wait for me to text him because he was telling me let's talk let's talk at night i'm like okay i'll make some time and then it would just continue and i'd have to text him say you know what time do you want to talk did you still want to talk and i didn't want to really do this i don't want to chase him i'm not the chasing type i'd rather him show more initiative since he's the one who reached out to me anyway so so I want to give you some perspective about men who have been cheated on. Okay. Men who have been cheated on oftentimes have, it, it's a deep wound. I mean, men are very territorial. So when, when a woman cheats on a man, that, that really affects his identity as a man. So he probably now, remember I talked about in the earlier video, or earlier in the video, I talked about how his attachment style could okay. change. You know, it's the same thing. Once he's had a traumatic experience to have infidelity, it sounds like what he's yes. done is play the field for a while because he's like, hey, I'm just going to play for a bit because I don't trust women. And when you didn't respond in a timely yeah. manner, now it doesn't, you, you were, you didn't do anything wrong, Nina. Exactly. It's just, he doesn't trust. He's, he already has trust issues built in. So if you're not operating anywhere no, near, so. you're not operating any near anywhere near what okay. he needs, he's going to play this push and pull, push and pull. And you're saying, well, I don't want to initiate because I want him to come to you. Well, this is the emotional dynamic you guys are playing in right now. Most likely, he has a significant wound that hasn't been healed. So he's going to operate with mixed messages. OK, now, um, you know, you had an experience, sadly, losing a, a okay. you know, a spouse. So you have a wound as well that can be equally as traumatic if a person hasn't done true grief yes. work. Now, grief isn't just think about this. Death is one form of loss. But betrayal is another form of loss. And it's actually see the one thing about losing a spouse you can celebrate them in the morning. You can celebrate them in the morning period. Not only does he not celebrate his ex-wife, yes. yes. he's emotionally damaged from that experience. And to make matters worse, he's mourning through uh, um, a lack of, of, of loyalty, integrity. He is mourning the loss of loyalty. He's mourning the loss of integrity. See, a body, especially if you love someone, we can at least move into to being great. Remember I said 18 years, what a blessing. We can at least be grateful for our time. How do you be grateful for someone who betrayed you? Yeah. Be grateful, so, yes. I'm very uh, and grateful. So he's, he's become suspicious. Even though he kind of likes you, he kind of had a crush on you back in the day. He kind of liked you, kind of had a crush on you back in the day. Um, so he's giving you mixed, mixed signals. So I guess the question is, what do you want to do about this going forward? When was the last time you communicated with him? When was it was the last actually time? two nights ago. 
And, um, you know, I did bring some of it up. Like, you know, I don't understand kind of what you're doing. If, if I, I, I'm a little unclear. What did you say to him? I don't understand. Um, what you're I said, doing. I, I said, I don't. So I said, sometimes I'm texting you and you're, you're taking like six, seven hours to respond. I said, that's okay. You know, but I would appreciate an answer if we're going to talk at a certain time at night, because, you know, um, that way I can work around it. Yeah. So, okay. And he, he didn't way, take, too, I could tell he didn't to take consider, too well of that, you know, oh, he what, just. One other thing I didn't mention earlier about betrayal. He might have not been a great partner in this relationship. He might have been emotionally unavailable. He might have been abusive. There might be reasons why she's, you know, there's there's obviously the reason that yeah. he's done something to cause infidelity. Because I will tell you, happy relationships don't end with there's the always infidelity. There's always a two-parter two yeah, to it. So. so the question is, do you want to meet? Like, right. I mean, here, here, I want you to, Send him a text message, okay? You can go back and rewind this to listen to what I'm going to say, and you can write your own version of this. But you can simply say, okay. hey, I really appreciated that you reached out. I really appreciated that All you right. reached out, okay? And, you know, and it's nice to connect with somebody who's, you know, familiar to me. And because of that, I'd love to meet you in person. Can we make that happen? I'd love to meet you in person. Can we mm -hmm. make that happen? Tonight is Thursday. Send it and talk. Send it as soon as we wrap up this video so you can see him on Saturday or Sunday. And you could say, look, we can meet halfway to make it convenient. We can meet halfway to make it convenient. Okay. And, and it'd be nice to have a cup of coffee with you or a drink or a bite to eat. But it'd be just nice to reconnect with you face to face. And then we can take it from there. Are you game? Leave right. it with the question. Are you game? Does yeah, that resonate sure. with I you? I mean, I can take care of myself. Yeah, I can I can publicly meet him somewhere and drive there and whatnot. It's not a problem, you know, mm -hmm. just in case. Yeah. It is. All right. Do you think you have enough to move it forward or do you need a little bit more? Um. Well, he kept it. I, yeah, no, I thank you for your time. I really thank you for your time. I mean, it, it's just the last text that confused me because it looks like he was pulling back and I was like, okay. Um, just remember. What he really okay. wanted to do was meet in the first place. But if that's what needs to happen so I can at least affirm for myself whether, you know. You know, here's the thing. Um, you've got history together, but you have no obligation to do anything. Just know that. Right. Um, but here's the thing. Men sometimes need a little push. It feels safer when the woman initiates it because then we don't, especially he might have a wound around rejection. So by you initiating it might make him feel a little bit safer. Okay. I mean, or, you know, like I know you can hear a lot of dating rhetoric. That's chasing a man. Look at Nina. Effort is not chasing. Effort is simply effort, okay? Chasing is the guy is running away and you're chasing him. That's what chasing is. Okay. He's not running away. Did he pull away a little okay, bit? <laughs> Maybe a little bit he pulled away and you're making a little bit of effort, okay? It's just you're investing a little bit to see if he meets you. And then he should invest a little bit, see if he meets you. And you invest a little bit, see if he meets you. It's, it's a dance of investment. So you're making a tiny little investment of effort. You started with gratitude. I'm really grateful that you reconnected with me. Okay, you started with gratitude. You make the suggestion. And then if it doesn't pan out, you move on. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of appreciation. Thank you. Okay? <laughs> Thanks for being on. Okay. Thank you so much. All I right. appreciate you. you. Best to you. Big fan. Thank you so much. Donate hope, to the Connor Asley Scholarship Fund. I hope you heal well as well from what's been happening with you. You're very, I appreciate that. Donate to the Connor Asley Scholarship Fund right now. I'll be you donating. Know, thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. You know what? Nina had a great question. Okay. She's reconnected with someone from her past. 
Their communication has been a little bit spotty. He has a, a, a traumatic life experience that might cause him to give mixed signals. It's not uncommon when we are when we are haven't done the work to heal from our wounds, we oftentimes can give mixed signals. So she simply, my advice to her was simply initiate a connection. But Jonathan, that's chasing. Ladies, that's not chasing. That's making a little bit of investment, see if he meets you. And then if they meet, they do the sniff test. Like dogs sniff each other's asses to see if it's safe. And so she makes a little bit of effort to see if there's a connection there. And then they can build upon that effort and build upon that effort and build upon that effort and build upon that effort. Now, Dania, uh, Dana, Diane says there's something not right about him. You don't know him. Who knows what he says is true? Trying to understand a story, a stranger to feel sorry for him makes a woman vulnerable. Now, I disagree with that. First off, they have a history together. Now, is he making, I don't think him saying he got cheated on was to make him feel sorry. I think, he, I think men feel wounded and they might get some sympathy from you. See, here's the thing that both men and women do habitually. They create a scenario, create a scenario to set up feeling sorry for them. Do you realize that 99% of people whose relationship ends, it's always the other person's fault? It's his fault. No, it's her fault. It's his fault. It's her fault. It's his fault. It's her fault. It's do you realize that nobody takes ownership? Folks, I'm going to take 51% of ownership for the ending of my marriage. I was a jackass husband. I was unconscious. I was selfish. I take 51% ownership. 99% of people take this much percentage of ownership. So he didn't take ownership. I agree. That can generate sympathy. I agree. Her job, dating, is a vetting process to see if it makes sense to build a relationship with someone. That's what dating is. It's a vetting process. So my invitation for her is do a little due diligence by creating that sniff test. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Post a comment below if what I shared resonated with you. If it did, hey, hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. Also, if you want to connect with me directly, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. And also, um, check out the books I recommend.